Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. I got a lot of different pouches, loadouts, etc., etc. So for my everyday carry, I kind of do it different ways. I have a primary, which are things that physically go on my body. It being winter time, I tend to carry more stuff. I may need more stuff. So the thing that goes in my pocket, a knife, a multi-tool, flashlight, wallet, etc., etc. Then there's my secondary. Those are the things that go on, you know, still connected to my body, but not necessarily always on there. So for instance, I may decide to have a sling bag and in that sling bag, I'll bring different items, have different items with me and, and kind of load that out as I see fit. Now, I like to have things that can go from place to place. So today we're gonna talk about my premium pouch EDC loadout what I keep in here. I do have other pouches as well that I use, but I tend to just have the premium one normally for like a weekend type of thing. Let's talk about what's in here specifically, why I have it. All right, so first off, this is my premium pouch. This is the pouch that I would normally take with me on the weekends, weekdays. A lot of times this may not see any uses. For instance, my pouch that's always in my bags and stuff like that right now is the Pico just a roaring fire pico pouch pro this just recently came out we'll do a video talk about what's kind of in my everyday use pouch here soon i like this thing a lot but let's take a look at the premium pouch things that are inside of here why do i keep the things in here etc etc first off the pouch itself we are rocking the nut sack this is the double admin pouch I've had this thing for a while i'm already starting to get some fantastic patina on here i will link a video in the description where i basically have already done an entire review of this and you can check out and see if this is going to be something that's right for you it comes in leather or you can get it in wax canvas i have it in leather feels premium nice decent size on here this is using i think this uses full grain not top grain so the the toughest and the most luxurious leather on the the, the hide of the cow don't quote me on that check out the links in the description to determine if that's all well and dandy so now the actual nutsack double admin pouch is symmetrical on both sides it has two large slip pockets with a bunch of molly on either side and it allows for you to be very versatile about how you want to store stuff what you want to put stuff in there so just a close-up of everything that's kind of how it looks you can see the two slip pockets the molly same thing on the other side two slip pockets with a bunch of three molly strips on there but we got to start off with the most important item this is my cigar cutter. So I do have a cigar cutter by Benchmade. Complete overkill when it comes to a cigar cutter, but this has S30V steel on it, and this is a guillotine style cutter. I've had this thing for a while. Of course, you can send this back into Benchmade for a sharpening. It's pretty easy to sharpen though, it's not hard to do. I don't know what kind of wood this is made out of, but I, I like this a lot. I had to start off with this because I wanna smoke a stick as we as we see fit. I'm gonna have a factory smoke by Drew Estate. This is a Robusto. And since we are sparking up an actual stick, I guess we can talk about what we use for that. I do have a Zippo and a Molly pouch right next to, uh, on the other side. And the, Zoli, the Molly pouch by Zippo is made in America. The Zippo itself is made in America. Then I have a butane insert for this brass Zippo that we have that we're rocking right here. And that way it makes life a lot easier for me to be able to spark stuff up. A, this is a double butane torch insert that I have in here for the Zippo. All right, so next to the Zippo, you will find a little bit of Burt's Bees. I did a video recently where literally a guy was like, only females need lip chapstick and stuff like that. I don't know, being a weirdo or a troll, but that fits in the Molly next to the Zippo. And then next to that, I do have a Wubin X2 flashlight, which I've been a big fan of this. This is not a super special flashlight as in like it's, it doesn't have a spot. It's more of a flood type of light. But what I like about it is this patina action. I got this brand new from Wubin. Shout out to Wubin for sending this out for me to check out. When I got this thing, it looked brand new, of course, like a Wubin copper flashlight would. I did a force patina method with a little bit of liver of so forth. I will link my Instagram down below to talk about how I went through that method. And now it looks like I've had this thing for well over a year and I've probably had this for one month. So now I got some dope, lovely look of patina out of my flashlight. This is just a very capable flashlight because I like the fact that the USB port is hidden under this little flap right here. So you can use that 
if you need to. It is IPX68 rated, meaning this can go in six feet of water for up to an hour. That's the only way I was able to do this forced patina method because you have to dip it in liver or sulfur mixed with warm water for only about 15 to 20 seconds, but it needs to be IPX68 rated for something like that. Pocket clip is pretty trash, so it works best in a pouch or something like this. It's just too aggressive. I think it's similar to the Wubin XO. Their pocket clips are super aggressive. They're hard to, to bend and use, and maybe it would work itself out if I wore it in the pocket more, but I don't want that frustration. Plus, the pocket clip is not very versatile because you can't put this on your hat. But this is a great full-size flashlight for the, the purposes of being able to have something more powerful than your phone or the flashlight in your pocket. If you need to illuminate something, maybe you're going into a dark building or to a tree line, I like it for stuff like that. Plus, it does have a built-in 2000 milliamp hour battery on the other side of the zippo we do have a little this is a bottle cap opener this also opens cans so if you have like a mixed energy drink or something like that you can use this on the very top of the can and you could actually put it right here and pull the can open if you have really short nails or you can use this as a pry tool if you want to and this has a bottle cap lifter on this side, which is pretty decent. And then overall, it has like a big lanyard hole at the end. And this is made of copper as well. I like this because this is a great talking piece. This pouch is a type of pouch I would take to a buddy's house. We're enjoying some cigars. We're enjoying some drinks. When I set this down on a table, we're setting it down on a smoking area like that. I want to pull premium items out that just kind of give a, a good feeling of, of swag and things that I like to use and, and keep and stuff like that. So this is how I built it out. Now, next to that, we keep a carabiner by Rovivon. Overall, it is a carabiner. You can hook stuff to it, but it also has a built-in knife. So you can use this if you don't want to gunk up your, your regular knife with uh, boxes. The safe is you got to break down a bunch of boxes, or open a bunch of boxes. You don't want to gunk your knife up with tape. You can use that. It also has a bit driver in here. I use this little bit driver to put together my TS Prof uh, knife sharpener has some small things in there. So I wanted to use a bit driver instead of the included Allen keys. This, it worked out well. Was it a necessity? Could I put out an electric bit driver set? Yeah, by Hotel or something like that. That's great. But the main reason I have this is that if I am somewhere, then I can take this entire pouch, use it here, clip it to something, clip it to a bag and have it at the ready. Or I can take my keys and clip them if I want to take my keys out of my truck, which I normally don't keep a a carabiner on my keys so maybe i just want to take my car keys with me and clip them to my belt so i keep that with me just in case next to that i do keep a daily carry co titanium toothpick make sure you got some good gums for this because this thing is sharp but it's a little toothpick it comes out you screw it on you pull it out and it adapts right into itself so you can pull it out and it makes it a little bit longer to use as a toothpick or you can just leave it in half get anything out your mouth, you're going over someone's house, you're having a good old time. I would recommend keeping the case, that way you can have it in a small size and not lose it because it's such a small item. Now underneath that, you see there's two slip pockets, right? One slip pocket I keep empty because, you know, it's, it's already a lot of stuff on top of it. But this side where the slip pocket, I keep a Essie, a Altoy size mini survival kit. You can just buy this on Amazon. I've added some additional items to it, but even the kit as it stands is a nice, reliable kit. Nothing super fancy about this. This is something you're gonna use that if you're in a situation, you're at a house party or something like that, you're doing some knucklehead stuff and you need to start a fire, you need to have a little bit of a compass or something like that, that's what this is really for. On the outside, I added a ranger band. Ranger bands are flammable, so you can actually use this as a fire source. Inside, there's some tinder that comes with it. You can check, I'll link all the specs for this kit and link it down below if you want to check it out. I've added a couple of things in here that are specific for mine. I've added some band-aids in here for algae boo-boo purposes. I've added some ibuprofen and I've added um, some actual Tylenols just in case I can't take ibuprofen for whatever reason. And then the, the survival kit overall has a little bit of, you know, a button light, has a button compass, it has a little light in here. Just a, a, a very relatively affordable survival kit that you can keep with you if you get stuck inside your car for something. It's just, you never know when you might need any of this stuff. So that's basically everything on this side, except for that Zippo that we talked about. Then there's the center portion at the very bottom. The center portion at the very bottom, I keep the actual sheath for the Benchmade cigar cutter. Just so as, I'm, as I pull this thing out and use it at an event or a party or whatever, the naked cutter is not just sitting around. 
but they provide this with you um, a nice little leather sheath and I wish it did have a, a clip so you can clip it to your belt but it's pretty nice nonetheless then at the very bottom down there also I keep a hair tie of course I got dread so I got to keep that at the rock and ready 65 watt charger I think this is by AOE I can't pronounce the name of the company but I wanted this one because of the size it does have the prongs that flip up so they don't constantly stay out so that means I don't have to worry about damaging the inside of this pouch it has US two USB-C outputs and a USB-A output so if I need to charge a device or somebody else needs to charge a device this works you never know you're in somebody's house and if you're going to be there for a while you could throw a battery bank in here but I chose to go with that to have sure power to have just like an unlimited supply of power versus a battery bank next now we're moving to the other side we do have a little flask here this flask is full of woodford reserve double oak i like woodford reserve double oak normally if i swap this out i don't normally put any bourbon in here that's higher than 95 proof this is i think an eight ounce flask don't quote me on that but i normally only put about six ounces in here which is about three drinks next to that is some field notes never know when I need some field notes wherever we're at, so there's a lot of times when you're sitting with your buddy and you guys just kind of start shooting the shit or writing down ideas or a business you didn't think you wanted. Now you got that. I have the field notes with the actual grid lines on it. I will prefer not to lose this pouch. So I do keep a Chipio, a Chiplio tracker inside of here. Only complaint I have about these things is that you have to recharge these with solar power with the sun which kind of sucks. Other than that, you know, it is what it is. They very good. It, it works on Android. And in this slip pocket, I keep a USB-C to USB-C cable with the little nut sack cable keep here. And this is gonna allow for me to charge my phone. I wanted to get one that was relatively longer. This is a six foot cable. So to go along with this, this little plug, this brick right here, for the most part, wherever I'm at a buddy's place, I should be able to plug up and get a nice charge on any of my devices. That includes the flashlight. Flashlight starts to run low, I can charge it up. My phone starts to run low, I can charge it up. So that's the main reason I wanted that USB to USB-C cable. Next to that, I do keep the F2 Bravo by Tactico in here. This is kind of one of those executive style knives and a lot of companies are making these type of knives nowadays. This is a marble carbon fiber scale on here. So it does have like this little marbling in there that's like red along with the carbon fiber. The logo is a little bit too big for me, but I, it's okay. It's not the biggest thing in the world. I can understand you want to promote your shit. This is a coated D2 blade. This one is marked as USA made. I actually mark, um, hit them up on their website and I said, hey, is this truly USA made? Cause you're marked it that way or what? And they said, yeah, because this one has at least 70% of parts and et cetera from the States, they can call this USA made. Um, they're out of Portland, Maine for this one. They do have other knives. I wanna check out the A3 knife, I think is what they call it. Pocket clip is really good. Nice secondary knife, D2 coated. So it's not, does, D2 naturally doesn't have that weather resistance, corrosion resistance like a S30V would, but with the coating, you will get a little bit more life out of this. Next to that is the Bastion pen. This is a Bastion boat action pen to go with that field notes. Now this one is a copper pen that has been patina in on its own versus the force patina I did with my Wubin. Look at the difference of the two, okay? So this Bastion pen has been force patina, or excuse me, natural patina for me using it over the last year and a half and just let the patina action happen naturally. And then we got the force patina method that I did on the Wubin. I like the natural patina more, but I still really like the way force patina looks. Let me know in the comments down below. Would you force patina your items? You like the natural? I would love to know. But this one does have very, very slick lines to it. It's actually kind of hard to see where it actually comes apart for you to, to change the refills out. It feels extremely heavy in the hand, really good in the hand. So the two slip pockets. So it's a mirrored finish on both sides. I like it. I like the fact, I do wish you can get some colored guts on this. I know that there are some competitors such as Wingback or Waterfield where they're doing these type of pouches, but they're, they're coloring the inside. For instance, one of my favorite slings right now is the Waterfield uh, Sutter sling. It does have a nice colored interior. I believe they sell pouches where I can get this nice colored interior as well, which is just a a nylon interior that's been sewn on the inside of the wax canvas instead of leaving it naked. This kit is really geared towards those times when I am definitely wanting to have a premium feel, a premium look. So comment down below, is this some of the, some items that you would put in a premium EDC loadout? Some of these are completely useless. 
you don't need them. I wouldn't recommend that you carry this stuff every day unless you're an avid cigar smoker or you're the type of person just likes to have things at the ready at all times. Sometimes I'll just literally plop this on my desk and just kind of let it just sit there right out. It stands up on its own and people can kind of just enjoy themselves and kind of see exactly how I like to keep things going. If this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, well, thank you once again for stopping by watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.